Our guests are arriving on time to the second. They always do. And you always act like it's a miracle. My dear Tattoo, when each guest is paying $50,000 for a three-day stay on Fantasy Island, he or she deserves miracles. Right, boss. I find it exhilarating each time they come, the two. New people with new problems, new hopes, new fears. They are so mortal. everyone. Smiles. Company's coming. Smiles. Button your jacket, too. Mr. Arnold Greenwood, all the way from World War II. Henley, not so long ago, the most famous hunter in Africa. Hemingway would have loved him. Who is Hemingway? Mrs. Eunice Hollander Baines. Time Magazine, Women Executive of the Year. Who's Time Magazine? All the way from Pennsylvania for the funeral. My drink. Dear guests, I am Mr. Rock, your host. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Music, the two. Fantasy Island, indeed. Thank you. Fantasy Island. It's a wonderful name, a wonderful place. Your idea? I was consulted. Oh, I see you'd rather not say. Well, I respect that. I, uh, I made a fortune keeping the other guy guessing. <laughs> Chain drug stores. Uh, well, as, as you know, I was a journalist during World War II. Well, a, um, a reporter, anyway. But two months after the war, I quit. I couldn't spell, let alone write. Excuse me. I'd like to go to my room. Oh, certainly. Uh, tattoo? Yes, sir? Uh, show Mrs. Hollander Baines to her bungalow, please. Yes, sir. This way, ma'am. She never said word one on the plane. <laughs> Who is she? A firm rule on Fantasy Island, Mr. Greenwood. No questions ever about another client. 
Your paths won't cross again. I understand. A fantasy is personal, like mine. Well, what was I? Uh, oh, yes, some um, wholesale drugs. Yeah, uh, Mr. Greenwood, I already know your past completely, or you wouldn't be here. You are rich and alone, wife deceased, children grown and gone. Your only interest in life now is the past, specifically reliving a brief but beautiful romance which took place in London about 30 years ago during the war. Yes. Two days that I never forgot. Francesca. Does this sound crazy? Oh, I make no judgments. When I accepted your check for $50,000, I accepted your fantasy. And you, you found a, a girl who looks exactly like Francesca. You, you briefed her. All details have been taken care of, Mr. Greenwood. Francesca, the London flat, the pub where first you met, they're all here on Fantasy Island. Everyone knows his or her role. You're a magician. Some call me that. Well, Mr. Henley, I trust your first sight of Fantasy Island isn't a disappointment. We have most uh, creature comforts. If you don't see what you want, simply ask for it. <laughs> Mr. Roark, your words remind me of my own when I used to greet each new safari. <laughs> Why don't we just skip it? Skipped. Let's get down to business. Your fantasy is that we try to kill you. We are ready. Perhaps. Were you able to secure expert hunters? The ice bucket, uh, Mr. Henley. <laughs> oh, nothing at all, nothing at all. Just a little trick. <laughs> a little joke. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> Expert enough, Mr. Henley? So he's a good shot. But that doesn't prove much. Is he a professional hunter? Professional? Um, no, I wouldn't call him that. I wouldn't call any of the three hunters I've hired to kill you professional. I'd say, rather, they were, um, dedicated. The hunt begins tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock sharp. When you take to the bush from the beach house, you are allowed no weapon save a hunting knife. The hunt is divided into three phases. They will be detailed to you one by one. You may quit before or after any phase, but not during one. You may have your money back now or never more. How say you? Tomorrow morning it is. Fine. Now, I'll walk you to your jeep if you like. Your bungalow, we call it the beach house, is uh, a good way off. You will find uh, further instructions there. Question to you, Rod. What did you mean back there about dedicated hunters? <laughs> You'll see, Henley. <laughs> You'll see. Your room satisfactory, ma'am? I don't appreciate the humor, Mr. Rourke. This is not a practical joke, nor simply idle curiosity. Oh, I had no way of knowing. The arrangements over the telephone were quite brief. Mr. Rourke, you said to me, as I recall, uh, my fantasy is that I attend my own funeral, arrange it, thank you, goodbye. Very well. I will say this much, and I will say it only once. I suggest you say it slowly, and as from one executive to another. The organization I run is... shall we say, larger than meets the eye. Hollander Woolen Mills is the third largest fabric manufacturer in the country. The business was started by and has been sustained by Hollanders, handed down from father to son to father to daughter. 
And each one, at some time or another, has had to worry about who is loyal, who can be trusted to carry on the Hollander tradition. And now, your time has come. Is that it? When all I know, all I feel is that some sort of conspiracy is going on. Thus, your fantasy. If I were to die suddenly, what would happen to all of it? Uh, as you requested, your husband, uh, brother and personal secretary are arriving for your funeral. There is also an unexpected mourner that you should know about. Your sister, Elizabeth. Who asked her to come? She's got nothing to do with the family. She left us long ago. Uh, thrown out is the way I heard it. At any rate, it seems she read the newspaper account. Oh, we had to put out a new story, you realize, telling that... Uh... Yes, I heard it on the radio. Uh, I was drowned at sea, a boating accident, and would be buried here on this island that I loved, my secret hideaway. Apparently, your sister read or heard the same story. I suppose she's coming here to make sure she gets her share of the inheritance. Possibly. Well, we'll find out, won't we? I mean, isn't that what this is all about? What would people say? What would people do if you were dead? That's it, isn't it? Precisely. Now, is there, uh... Is there some way I could be close by, see and hear what they have to say? Indeed. Over here, please. You will be Miss Martin, one of the higher ranking servants. I'd say you're here to listen rather than talk, wouldn't you? My dear Mr. Henley, these are the weapons to be used to kill you tomorrow. I'm told any of them can stop a charging rhinoceros dead in its tracks or a famous hunter. Since the hunt doesn't start until the morning, a relaxed evening has been planned for you. Excellent food, excellent wine, an excellent partner for the night. Eat, drink, and be merry, old man. It's the last chance you have.
Not bad at all. You never looked better. Hello, Francesca. How do you do, Mr. Baines? Please accept my condolences on your tragic loss. Oh, thank you, Mr. Roth. Oh, this is my uh, sister-in-law, Elizabeth Hollander. Liz will do. Flying shakes me up. Can I have a drink? Oh, certainly. Uh, Miss Martin, uh, see what Miss Hollander wants, please. Scotch on the rocks. And not too many rocks. This is uh, Charles Hollander, my brother-in-law. Beautiful place, Mr. Roth. I can see why my sister loved it so. Yeah, and Connie Raymond, my wife's secretary. How do you do? Where are we, anyway? What is this place? And why the mystery in getting here? Come on, Liz. It was Eunice's last request. Your drink, Miss Hollander. Uh, thanks. Uh, dinner will be served at 8 o'clock. I'm sure you don't like to rest a bit now and freshen up. Oh, uh, Tattoo will show you to your room. Thank you. Neat. Anyone care to join me for a drink? Refill, please. Catch up with us, huh? Lead on, Tattoo. I'm sorry, Mr. Rock. I didn't know she was going to be here. There was ever any love lost between my wife and her sister. I tried to stop her coming, but... Grant, don't let it get to you. Excuse us, please. She never called him Grant in front of me. Well, life goes on for the living. So soon. Madam, I conduct, arrange, if you will, these fantasies, but I am not, as the saying goes, responsible for their content. Excuse me. Here we are, Lieutenant. This is it? Go inside. You'll see. She'll be there? Everything will be exactly as it was. Exactly.
That'll be six pence, Yank. Francesca. You did hear the air raid siren. I'm a fatalist about German bombs. A thirsty fatalist. Parched. Are you a fatalist, too? Hmm. Just curious. You ducked away instead of going down. He's a very brave man, I said to myself. Well, you were wrong to yourself. He's a claustrophobic, just hates small rooms with a lot of people in it. <laughs> Me too. I go nuts in a shelter. That's really why I'm still up here. My name is Francesca Hamilton. Arnold Greenwood. Well, um, what's an American girl doing in London? Well, my folks came here a few years back and loved it. We decided we wouldn't let a little war scare us away. I'll toast that. Cheers, Francesca. Cheers, Arnold. Music? <laughs> Only if I don't have to sing along. You don't have to dance, either. But it'd be nice. Oh. I mind dancing. That's my profession. Oh, really? You teach like Arthur Murray's? <laughs> no, I'm in the ballet. A ballerina. No, 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 no. Chorus. But don't worry. I promise to dance badly. I don't think you would know how to dance badly. <laughs> You dance beautifully. Must be the uniform. No. No, they've been showing us Fred Astaire pictures instead of training films. <laughs> I like that, Alan. Arnold. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'll be Alan if you want me to. Oh, no, no. No, I, li I like Arnold. Good. Arnold like you, too. <laughs> Have dinner with me tonight, Francesca. But, sir, this is so sudden. Mm, so is my two-day pass. Please. We'll cook in. My apartment okay? If you insist. It's a nice air raid. Terrific. <laughs>
compliment of Master Rock. Well, this is a fantasy I didn't expect. I enjoy. I'll try. My name is Michelle. Hello, Michelle. I'm... I know. Paul Henley. Hunter, mountain climber, jet setter in khaki. <laughs> Boy, that really sounds terrible. Are you a friend of Mr. Rourke, or did he hire you? Anybody who hires me is my friend. Do you tell you why I was here? Everything. Except why you want to kill yourself. Is that what you think I want to do? A hunter who wants to be hunted? Isn't it obvious? Well, I'm sure Mr. Rourke wouldn't want us to waste the whole evening discussing my motives. Now, what would Mr. Rourke want us to do? Well, I think he'd say... Let's enjoy the wine. Nineteen sixty-one, very good year. It is to Mr. Rourke and his usual excellent taste. To your fantasy. Done thirty. Mm, you're sexy. <laughs> I should have come early. There. Ah, I feel as if I were born on Swan Lake. For me. Thank you. You're sweet. You're sweet. Well, if uh, you're going to kiss me every time I give you flowers. Here. <laughs> no, thank you. I already have some. <laughs> you really are, Francesca. That's me. Odd name, isn't it? My grandfather was Russian. Uh, which brings me to dinner. I bet you can't guess what we're having. Lasagna. How did you know? You must be psychic. The Swami sees something burning in the oven. Oh, my lasagna! That's how you knew! Saved by the Swami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Arnold Greenwood, tell me all about yourself. How many words? You see, that's the way they uh, assign our stories. They say, um, give us 1,500 words on Eva Braun, give us 2,000 words on General Montgomery, but make it something personal. What does he wear to bed? What do you wear to bed? <laughs> Well, if it's cold enough, I wear a flannel nightgown. And a funny flannel hat, too? I would if I had one. <laughs> you will. For Christmas. Now, tell me all about yourself, Arnold Greenwood. 
Take all the words you need. Well, I'm unmarried. I'm unengaged. I am a combat correspondent attached to Ike's staff. That's it. Were you a reporter in civilian life? No. But I was on the college paper until they kicked me out of college. And I was 4F for the Army, bum eardrums. How about you? My eardrums are fine. No. Married? No. Engaged? No. Going steady? Nope. Why? You're bright, you're bubbly, and you're beautiful. And bored with the men I meet. Or met, anyhow. I haven't met anyone who's interested me either. Until this afternoon at the pub. But then you're not new to me. What do you mean? Deja vu or something? Uh, no. No, nothing spooky or anything like that. It's just that I, um... I've searched... Um... Waited. Waited is a better word. I've waited... all of my grown-up life... for someone like you to come along. And now here you are. I think I'm already falling in love with you, Francesca. Ah. You don't have to say anything just because I did. Except maybe, um... Excuse me, I'd like to go check the lasagna. You're a nice man, Arnold. Excuse me. I better check the lasagna. Yummy. May I have more? Well, I'm afraid that it might keep you awake. And I have to get up with the sun tomorrow. Hunt starts at 8. Mm. I'll pack you a picnic lunch tonight. Don't wake me. Mm. Where did Mr. Roy find you? Please, no questions. Time for the hunt. Wake up, Mr. Henley. Soon your life is on the line. Oh. Oh. Mm. Hey, come on. 
Let me get these off, huh? I didn't do it. The, the clothes. The brandy. I must have put something in the brandy. Mr. Henley, there's no time. The hunt is on. You can be seen even now by the first hunter through your open terrace window. Ow! 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 What happened to you in this Stay down! Shut up! Shut up! Stay down. Rook, you never said anything about her being handcuffed to me. That wasn't in the rules. There are no rules on Fantasy Island, except as I make them. Now I suggest you move out the front door and to the jungle. It's dangerous where you both are now. The next shot will be fired in uh, five seconds. Come on. Come on! Mr. Henley. I'm the hunter for phase one. Don't shoot, please. I won't. Not for 20 minutes yet. Phase one, Mr. Henley. A hunting preserve. Surely you remember those. Usually they're owned by kings and maharajas. This one is owned by me. 100 yards directly to the north, there is a red flag. You must get there in 20 minutes' time, or the hunter will start shooting to kill. 20 minutes to go 100 yards, Rourke. What's the catch? Traps. Surely you remember animal traps, snares. Very cute. You still have a choice, Henley. Phase one, go or no go. Why the girl? Why put her through this? Yes or no? Yes, damn it. Do I have anything to say about this? You had your say when you took this job. You dirty... Sticks and stones. 20 minutes, Henley. Oh, allow me to introduce you to the first hunter, the first dedicated hunter. His name is Mr. Adams, Hugh Adams. Do you remember him from Africa, in Kenya? You should. You cheated him out of a hundred thousand dollars worth of land in 1966. We begin, Henley. Good, Adams. That's what I came for. Now you walk when I walk, you stop when I stop, or I'll cut your arm off and go alone. You understand that? Twenty minutes, Henley, or the hunter will start shooting to kill. Leaves are withered, dead. The leaves die on vines, don't they? Uh, the vine usually falls first. It's an animal trap. Dead vine used as a release wire. To release what? All kinds of nasty little surprises. We can go under it, can't we? A 
We're gonna have to. Oh! Now what? Move and shut up. Tricky little devils. Well, we're trying to avoid that vine up there and stumble over this. This is the real release wire. Watch. Good show, Henley. He's really insane. Ten minutes are gone, Henley. Ten minutes to go. You've only covered 50 yards. 50 yards to go. We're never gonna make it. Come on. You're in vain, too. How does it feel to be the hunted, Mr. Henley? Exhilarating, Mr. Rourke. Never felt better. Quite a dilemma, eh, Henley? Fourteen minutes gone. Good boy. Cut her arm off. Say, take my hand. Yes. <laughs> That's it, baby. Come on. Now grab my wrist. Come 
That's it, sweetheart. Around the tree. Had a go. seconds left. Time! Cease firing. He's made it. Don't pull that trigger. Congratulations, Henley. You were superb. To hell with you, Rourke. To hell with you! To hell with you! Check the oil. Hey, can't we even talk? I didn't ask for a rock group, just a little dinner conversation. Let's talk about Eunice. Let's remember her and not bury her. That comes the day after tomorrow. Now, who's going to be first? Connie? How about you? Miss Raymond, I understand that you're Mrs. Hollander Bain's personal secretary for six years. Do you have any comment? Yes. I hated the job. Oh. Why is that, Miss Raymond? Because she had a sharp tongue and a short temper. Oh, Connie, how can you sit there and say that? Please, sir. Only one interview at a time. Miss Raymond, are you trying to say that Eunice Hollander Baines was a dreadful person? But then I'm sure you know that. I have the distinct feeling it runs in the family. At least on the female side. <laughs> I see. Well, if that's the way you felt, why did you stay? Him. Oh, Liz, cut it out. No, no. Let her go on. I have nothing to hide. No, I didn't stay for him. But while I was there, I used him. I did everything I could to make Eunice jealous, to make her suspicious. Every slinky move I could make, every come-hither look I could give, I did anything I could to further the illusion. <laughs> That's very interesting. You wasted a lot of time. I hardly noticed you. But Eunice did. She never mentioned it. She wouldn't. It would give you power. Anyway, I got that off my chest. Connie, baby, tell me if that's the way you felt. Why did you come here to the funeral in the first place? Curiosity. Did she remember me in her will after all? You know, along with the servants. No. She didn't. You read it? The will? When she wrote it. I'm the executor, remember? You don't get a penny. Surprise. Speaking of wills, Mr. Baines, how did you come out? Liz, you have two options. One, get out of here or shut up. Take your choice. I loved my loved wife. Loved her? You ran with other women. You wasted her money. I loved her! <laughs> my mind. You're something else when aroused, aren't you? You even affect old lady housekeepers. I don't suppose you ever have anything to say. Oh, no, 
don't start up the Charles. Charles can take care of himself. Thank you, Grant. Well, the mouse that roared. I find you vulgar. What's a little sister for? Tell me, Chuck, how was it all those years after Mom and Dad died, being run by big sister Eunice, being run at home, at the office, Cocktail parties, golf courses, Christmas, New Year's, Fourth of July. Didn't it hurt your masculinity? Not a bit. Nor my sanity. This may come as a surprise to you, Liz. But I was happy to be number two in the company. As long as Eunice was number one. She had the brains, the drive, and the guts to run the mill just fine. To tell the truth, Liz, I never really gave a damn about the business. Eunice knew that, and she never pushed me. I loved her for that. Yes, I loved her. We all know you never did. You do, huh? Well, I guess you do at that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I said it enough times, shouted it from enough rooftops. Eunice Hollander Baines. <laughs> Imagine keeping your maiden name after you're married. We didn't lose a sister, we gained a hyphen. It wasn't always like that. She raised me like a mother. And I loved her, too even after she had me thrown out of Hollander for being the town drunk. Our own town, too. Why did she have to come to this insipid fat cat place and get herself killed? Why? Effort, the time, the trouble, the expense. It's so worthwhile if I find out nothing more than my sister Liz doesn't hate me. She really loves me. You wish to end the charade? No, not yet. Not with the others, but uh, I do want to end it with Liz. Tomorrow? Tonight, now. I can't stand her grieving over my death any longer. I, uh, I'm going to tell her. I just wanted you to know. I would have. How? You're in my world, Miss Martin. to find out who my friends are and who my enemies are and whom I can trust. I just couldn't go on anymore with you thinking uh, I was dead. Well, shouldn't we tell the others? Oh, no, not yet. There's so much I have to learn, yet it's important they don't know. Promise me you won't tell them, you understand? Yes. Oh, Eunice. I can't believe it. You're alive. Oh, thank God. I love you, Liz. Good night. Good night.
She's gone. That's unbelievable. You were right. You bet your little booty. I knew that something was wrong from the beginning. It's a funny place to die, and a funny way to die, and a funny way to have a funeral. Only the joke is going to be on her. All we have to do now is kill her. Huh? Her death has been announced and verified. Grant, it is our one chance. <sighs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's run that through again. I, you were right about pulling a little trick, but... But what? We should just give up? She has her laugh and we all go home. Home to where you see me every other week, maybe. Home to yes, Eunice, no, Eunice. Home is hell for us. And sooner or later, she's going to catch us and then we are both dead. Magnificent back there. What else is there? More of the same. Fun and games. That's why I'm here. I don't buy that. It's something else, like some kind of guilt you're trying to get rid of. You're a very beautiful lady. <laughs> Uh, breakfast satisfactory? Excellent, Mr. Rock. Excellent. Good. Uh, this is Mr. Gitu Umba, hunter for phase two. A dedicated hunter? Oh, yes. Who also knows me. Indeed. Of course, there is no reason you should know him, recognize him. He was away from his village on safari the day of the uh, accident. What accident? Don't you remember? In Kenya, you were driving recklessly through his village, drunk, some say. Cracked up, hit a parked truck, his truck. His child was playing inside, broke both his legs. Little toddler. Um, you needn't worry about the young lady this time. Looks like you're fired. What are the conditions of this hunt? Ah. Uh, you start from the edge over there. Down the hill some hundred yards or so to, uh... To the red flag, without getting shot by Mr. Umba. And where will he be during all this? any place he chooses along the drop, but at no time closer to you than 200 yards or so. Or so. Yes or no? No. Well, I'd like to take a little look before I leave. Certainly, please. Okay, fine. 
Oh, smashing. going to protect you against bullets? No, it's going to protect my tender bottom against the ground. I'll see you. I'd certainly like that. So good, Henley. Phase three will begin tomorrow morning. Another tent will be set up for you to spend the night. And uh, rest well, Henley, for phase three is, um, uh, what do young people say today? Um, a grammar. <laughs> I'm afraid. What of? Look, all you have to do is be waiting here. Waiting for her. I'll get her out here. But she'll never get to you. Look, I'll take care of... Oh. Liz. Liz. You've got to understand, it's not that easy for me. If you don't want to do this, it's not going to work. Now, you decide, Grant, yes or no, and decide now. Yes. Will you do something for me? Yes. Go turn the record over. If you'll do something for me. <laughs> what? Scratch your back again? Marry me? Oh. Well, we've just met. I, I mean, I, I don't marry men that I've just met. I love you, Francesca. Right after the war, we could go to the States. 
Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, you're going too fast. Let's just take one day at a time. You love me. I know you do. I know it. I can feel it. Go turn the record over. Lousy liar. Arnold, what is it? Not married. Not engaged. No boyfriend. You and Tim? Why did you lie to me? Why? Uh, well, I, I didn't want you to know. I, I thought it would be easier. What were you after? Money? Do you do this every night? Right, we better get to the shelter. The hell with the shelter. We don't believe in them, remember? We're not going anywhere. Arnold, we'll talk about it later. No, we will talk about it now. Now, why did you lie to me? All right. I lied. I am married. So what of it? I mean, he's, he's away fighting by now. He's, he could be killed for all I know. All I wanted was a, a cozy weekend here with you, with anybody. What's so wrong in pretending? Liar! 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 For money? Do you do this all the time? Why did you lie to me? Not married. Not engaged. Stop it! No boyfriend! Rock! Stop it! This isn't real! Liar! Crazy. You liar!
Good morning, Henley. You slept well, I trust. Can you hear me? Good. The uh, helicopter over you is phase three. He's going to try to kill you from the air. You remember chasing animals that way, don't you, Henley? Antelope, lion, giraffe. Great sport, eh, Henley? To the east, over that rock, you'll see a red flag again. You must get there to the flag or in line with it to be home free. You can be shot any place this side of the flag. Now that much is more or less the same as the previous hunts. The differences are as follows. One, the hunter has an automatic rifle this time. Two, you have no option, the hunt is on. Wait a minute, Rourke. That isn't a hunt, that's murder. Sorry, I can't hear you. I've got a helicopter in my ear. I guess he was in too much of a hurry to get things started. Well, I'm not in a hurry to finish them. My name is Alex Davidson. You'll excuse me if I don't get up. That well, means nothing to you. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. Well, let's try another one then. My wife. My former wife's name is Priscilla Davidson. Priscilla, whom you stole and used and threw away. Priscilla, who couldn't come back to me and who wouldn't go anyplace else for her shame. She just disappeared, Henry. Is there anything you want to say before I die? Yeah. I am now across the line. Mr. Davidson, the red flag. 
According to the rules, I'm home free. The hell with the rules. The hell with you. I make the rules on this island, Davidson. All of them. All of the time. Only I break them. Nobody else. The rules be damned. He used my wife. Wrong. Your wife was used long before Henley, many times, by many men. But your way of avoiding the truth was to single out the notorious, the infamous Paul Henley and blame him. You had no justification for that blame. Neither did the other two. The first hunter, Hugh Adams from Kenya, who claimed he was cheated on a land deal, was a liar. He himself was trying to cheat Henley and failed. The second hunter was equally guilty. His child was injured because he neglected him. Gitu Umba wasn't away on the safari. He was drunk in his girlfriend's hut on the other side of the village. You knew the truth in each case, didn't you, Millie? You knew the truth, but you thought if you told it, they might not want to kill you, right? And you wanted to die. For all the killing you did as a hunter, animal killing, trophy killing, futile killing, it finally got to you. Right or wrong, Henley? I'm speaking to you, yes or no? It doesn't work that way. You're just not that rotten, apparently. You're not even all bad, or you wouldn't have had any sense of guilt in the first place. Good luck, Mr. Henry. And take care of that leg. What is he? God only knows. I wonder if he does. Good morning, Mr. Greenwood. Good morning. Yes. Last night, I murdered Francesca. Have you been drinking all night, Mr. Greenwood? I'm not drunk. Last night, I murdered my beloved Francesca. I choked her to death. I murdered her just like I murdered the real Francesca in London a long time ago. Well, Mr. Greenwood, it's quite possible you did commit that murder back in London. I killed that girl, too, the one that you sent me. Where? In the flat. When? Last night. You couldn't have killed her last night, Mr. Greenwood. She left by seaplane this morning. I put her aboard myself. She was in perfect health. I killed her. I can show you her body, the body on the bed. I wrecked the flat. Mr. Rock, come, I'll show you. All right. Photograph. It was just like the photograph.
Poor Mr. Greenwood. I'm afraid he'll just keep killing Francesca for the rest of his life. See for yourself, Eunice, you'll decide. I've already decided. If Grant is as upset over my death as you say, despondent, suicidal, well, I want him to know I'm alive. The charade is over. Oh, no! What is it? What are you looking at? Eunice, everything that I said to you last night was a lie. I don't love you. I detest you, and Grant detests you, too. We just wanted you to know that before you die. In the absence of an ordained minister, I shall conduct the service myself. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. We commend to thy bounty, O Lord, the remains of the deceased Elizabeth Holland. Uh, the service is concluded. Well, Mrs. Hollander Baines, it seems you didn't realize your fantasy after all. Uh, you did not attend your own funeral. I didn't miss by much either. But for the grace of God and Elizabeth losing her footing. Uh, which may also be the grace of God. Granted. I would be there, not she. Well, it's time we were leaving. Shall I collect your things, Mrs. Hollander Baines? I think all you can do for me, Connie, is to write a check for your salary for two weeks and leave it for me to sign and send to you. Somewhere far away, I trust. Goodbye. I'll look forward to your next funeral. I'll take care of your things, Eunice. 
Thanks, Charles, for everything. I just thank God you're back. I'd have uh, ruined the mill in three weeks. Eunice, for what it's worth, it'll help. It wasn't all me. It was Liz. I was weak. Mr. Rook, it seems to me I have one of two options. The police, attempted murder, and all that sort of thing. Or, uh, I've always wanted a perfect husband. I'm too busy a woman to settle for less. I've always wanted a man who's considerate and attentive, selfless, dedicated, virile, and romantic. Oh, each in its proper place and time. Uh, may I remind you, Miss Holland of Baines, it's your fantasy. So it is. I'd choose the latter. If you fail, if you falter ever for any reason, I will change my mind like that. Well, Grant, do you accept those conditions? I do, Eunice. I pronounce you both still man and wife. Uh, your plane leaves at two. I shall make arrangements for the others tomorrow. I'll see you at home. Don't be late. Thank you, Mr. Rourke. I enjoyed my stay. Good prayers? For the living or the dead? It doesn't really matter. Don't start relaxing, Tattoo. There's been a change in the schedule. The new guests are arriving early. How soon? Now. They are on that plane. But the servants, the drinks. I notified everyone. My, my, my white jacket. Also notified. Miss Angel Sherman, the most beautiful girl in the world. James Hoyt, penniless ranch hand who inherited two million dollars last week. Dr. Martin Seronsky, who thinks he's Dr. Frankenstein. My drink. Dear guests, I am Mr. Rock, your host. Welcome to Fantasy Island. 